So just when you think shearing is going well, it throws a curveball. The weathers have got pen stain. So what is pen stain anyway? It, it, it occurs if the sheep are passing sloppy feces, um, then that can sort of cling to their bum and then it gets rubbed onto the side of the other sheep in the pen and that creates a stain on the outside of the fleece. So that's pen stain. <coughs> The sloppy faeces uh, is what happens when the sheep are on green feed, so that means that we've stuffed up our management. But what we should have done was find a paddock with less green feed before we put these sheep in the shed for shearing. Or we could have left them in an empty yard uh, with water for uh, 12 hours or so to empty out a bit. Either way, it's not good management, and as we've had it happen before, uh, there's really no excuse. The problem with pen stain is that it devalues the wool considerably, uh, so we need to remove it from the fleeces and keep it as a separate line. So it's a double whammy. Uh, we're losing value and we're creating more work for ourselves. So you can see here a fleece that's had the back and the neck removed, and ordinarily that would be rolled up and go into the bale. But because there's pen stain in there, we have to take that out. And so that's a little bit of extra work to do that and it takes out that bit of the fleece which is on the side of the fleece and it's quite a valuable part of the fleece so you're, you're losing both ways you've got the extra work and you're losing the value of that bit of the fleece hopefully you can see from the video there how much of the fleece that we actually had to take out and put in the stain bin but it's not all bad news because the hoggets are fine we've managed to uh, get them onto a paddock that didn't have too much green grass and they've come into the shed and there's no pen stain on them so that's we're very happy with that i should explain that the hobbits are the young sheep so these sheep are in for their first shearing they're about 11 months old um, so we don't expect them to cut very much wool in comparison to the adult sheep um, <coughs> if we manage to get two and a half kilograms per sheep we'd be quite happy with that um, and because it's been you would think that with a lot of wet weather it would be a very good year for um, growing wool but the problem is that the sheep have not been moving around the paddock much because the paddock's been so wet so it's going to be pretty interesting to see just how much they do cut. Hopefully this view gives you an idea of the size of the hobbit fleeces compared to the weather fleeces that we were looking at earlier. These hobbit fleeces are a lot smaller um, and also the staple is a fair bit shorter so there's a lot less weight in these fleeces compared to the weather fleeces. The weather fleeces are probably about four kilos and these would be lucky to be two and a half. And for something a bit different, we'll get Ewan to show us how to set up the combs and cutters on a handpiece. There you go, you're back to square one. Yep, so we're going to... Got you. Cutter and cutter there, we yep. sit it, turn the handpiece upside down, sit yep. on our chicken feet. Yep. Get our comb. These are snow combs? Yeah, cover combs. What's the difference between these and an ordinary comb? Uh, these leave about an extra five mil on them. Five mil. Helps yeah, with the right cold right. a lot. Yep. So then we've got, got to get our leave right. Yep. Which is the hard bit. Got to get all that straight. Yep. We knit these up just so they're yep. just firm. And we'll flip her over. Make sure our chicken feed are in our cutter. Yep. Like that. Yep. And we've got to check our lead, which is our distance from the Tip of our colour, it's the tip of our comb. Not sure how well that'll come out in the camera, but anyway, we'll see. And, we go. Um, and then we've yep. got to check our throw. Yep. Go to the edge on yep. one side, yep. edge on another. Yep. And it all varies from sheep to sheep, so that one I'll snap that up, yep. the lead up a bit. So I'll turn upside down and I'll. Right. Hit her up. So you want smaller lead for these tighter sheep? Yep, that's correct. Yep. yep. So that's about right. That, that yep. lead for me, every yep. hand changes. Yep. Check the throw again. Yep. On this middle too, so I need to bump him over a bit. Bump it over. Yeah, until it's That's about it right. more even. Yep. So she's even there, yep. side to side. Yep. And now we're done. Now we all do is tighten him up. Tighten him up. And that's it. Beautiful. <laughs> and get the tension right. Yeah. And you'll adjust, do a fine 
adjustment on the tension when you're um yes yeah, see how she runs when she uh when, when you're running yeah. when she turns on thanks for that you no worries really marvelous mate yeah good stuff dan stace is our board boy today he comes from a well-known local wool growing family so he's been handling wool since he was knee high to a grasshopper his board work is first class um, you see there, he's just keeping the board clean, sweeping the locks under the table. Um, and now he's just about to, because there's other pieces on the table, he can't pick this one up and throw it onto the table. So he's going to put that one aside, but in such a way that when he goes to pick it up, it'll be the legs, back legs will be in the right position when we get. Uh, he, he's keeping the board nice and clean, just sweeping the locks with the paddle there, making them under the table nice and carefully. And he's actually done a little bit of my job there, um, doing a little bit of skirting there. Now he's moved on to the belly. He's picked up Dylan's belly, taken the brisket off and dropped the belly in the belly bin and the brisket in with the um, blue pieces. So now that the wool rollers have finally finished with that piece, with that fleece, which was a heap of rubbish, uh, quite water stone, so it's gone in the water stone bin. Um, Dan's gone and picked up the one that he off, off the board that was carefully put aside previously and laid it out fairly nicely on the table. Uh, Dan's been particularly good at getting these ones on the table. They are relatively easy because they are quite small and they're holding together uh, fairly well but nonetheless he's done a good job of getting them fairly flat on the table. Uh, and part of that's in the wrist action and part of it's by letting them have enough air so the, the neck rolls out and flops onto the table quite nicely. So he's doing a, doing a very tidy job. The other thing that he's doing particularly well is removing the dags and the stain uh, on the board and that means that it's not contaminating the rest of the clip. If it's removed on the board it's a much better result than if you try and clean it up on the table. And you can see here how particular Dan is and how careful he is. He's doing it in a very safe way. He's keeping away from the shearer, um, making sure sometimes the sheep will kick or whatnot. So he's making sure he's keeping out of, out of the way of that happening. This is a close-up of him picking up the fleece. And then you'll notice that as Ewan goes in to get the other sheep, he'll sweep the board and you'll notice how tidy he is about keeping, getting the locks off the board. A very tidy job. Having a good board boy can make a huge difference to the final quality of the clip preparation. Let's have a look at some panning up. These are hoggets. They'll run fairly well. Um, they haven't been in the shed before, but the trick is to know which way to bring them through the shed. Which uh, So bring them into one pen, then the next, then the next, then the next, and always have a sucker pen in front of them so that they're always running towards other sheep. Um, and, and they'll move fairly easily. There's no need for dogs or any of that sort of stuff. Anyway, that's probably enough for this video. Next video, we'll get the boys to say a few words and we'll see if we can get Ewan to shear Orf. Orf's a big crossbred pet. He's a lovely sheep. And we'll leave you with Lachlan's young pup dog, Billy. Billy's in training. Mm -hmm.